Okay, let's start off with the basics of matrices and vectors. So starting with um, matrices, we denote a matrix by a capital letter A, and we say it's an M by N matrix, meaning it has M rows and N columns, and the entries of that matrix are um, A11, A21, so the first um, index indicates the row number, the second index indicates the column number, down to, so we've got down to A um, M1 here. Uh, in the um, first row we have A12 across to A1N and then there, <coughs> excuse me, A um, M N there. And there we have our matrix. Okay, so the typical element of that matrix is the ijth element, which we denote Aij, or sometimes we'll put the uh, matrix in brackets um, and put the um, put the indices outside. Okay, so uh, one thing we'll often do with our matrices is take the transpose. So the transpose of a matrix is defined by um, switching the uh, indices around. So the um, rows become columns and the columns become rows. Right, so if we're going to take A transpose, then the first column of A will be, sorry, <laughs> the first row of A will become the first column of A transpose. Okay, so in other words, uh, A transpose IJ is the IJth element of A transpose is the um, Jith element of A. Um, so let's look at a simple example of a matrix. Um, so if we define B to be um, <coughs> the uh, 2 by 3 matrix, so it's got two rows, three columns, the entries of that are 1, 1, 1, um, minus 1, 3, 1, and 6, 2, 2. Um, so if we take B transpose, that'll be a um, what will that be? A 3 by 2 matrix. So it's going to have three rows and two columns. The first row, I'm sorry, the first column is just going to be the first row of A. So we'll take minus 1, 3, 1, and the second um, column will just be the second row of B. Uh, 6, 2, 2. <coughs> okay, so if we've got a, a couple of matrices, say we've got uh, two matrices um, A and B, and A is a um, K by M matrix, and um, B is a M by uh, N matrix, right? So A has uh, a has the same number of columns as B has rows, then we can take the product of these two things. Um, we can define a, um, a third matrix C, say, equals A times B, where um, an element of C is just going to look like this, right? So the ijth element of C, we're going to take the, um, the ith row of A, and we're essentially going to multiply that by the um, jth column of B, and we're going to um, look at the pairwise, um, sorry, the element-wise um, products of those things, and then we're going to sum them up. So we're going to go alpha equals 1, 2, M. Okay, so it's probably um, best if we look at an example of that. Uh, let's just change the letters we're using a bit. So let's define a matrix C to be a, um, what's that, a 3 by 2 matrix that looks like this. Uh, 2, 3, 1, minus 1, 1, 1. We'll define D to be the um, 2 by 2 matrix. Uh, 
2110. Uh, okay, and so we're going to calculate um, C times D. All right, so, uh, so let's just move D over a little bit and we'll go. Um, oops. We'll write that there. And okay, so we've got so okay, so we've got um, we've got C times D. We'll write that there. C times D, right? There, um, the number of uh, the number of columns of C, which is two, right? So that three by two, that's two by two. So we're going to end up with a three by two uh, matrix as the product. Um, and the f um, the first element is going to be uh, we're going to take this row of C. We're going to multiply it um, element-wise by this column of D. So we're going to get um, two times two is four, minus uh, plus minus one times one is minus one. Similarly, we go on. We get uh, two minus zero, six plus one, three plus zero. Uh, 2 plus 1 and 1 plus 0. So our final product is um, 3, 2, 7, 3, 3, 1. Okay. Okay, so let's now consider uh, a, a vector which is just really a special case of a matrix, a vector, which we typically denote by a lowercase letter, is uh, simply a matrix with um, one column. So the m-dimensional matrix, so the m-dimensional vector A is has elements A1 up to AM. Um, and notice that by default we we write a as a column vector. If we wanted to find um, wanted to talk about row vectors, then we look at a transpose, which is still n-dimensional, and it is um, has elements a1 to am laid down in a row like <coughs> a row like that. Okay. Um, what do we want to say about vectors? Well, we can think of them as um, geometric objects that have um, a length or a magnitude and a direction, right? So we can visualize this easily in a two-dimensional space. So let's set our dimension m equals two. Um, and let's take an example, the uh, um, vector a equals three, one, right? So how do we draw that in space? Uh, Let's just draw a couple of axes. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then uh, here's the point three, one is there. And so the vector three, one, A equals three, one is just right there. And the, so the thing has direction and it has um, this magnitude or length which we're going to call, uh, we'll use double bars, that's the uh, magnitude of A. Okay, so now we've defined um, uh, vectors, we can look at a couple of um, common uh, vector products. So the first is the dot product or the inner product. And so if we've got um, two vectors A and B of the same length, right, so they're M dimensional. So we can think of them as m by one matrices, if you like. Um, 
then the dot product um, a dot b is defined by um, a transpose times b right so a transpose is going to be 1 by m uh, b is m by 1 so the resulting product is going to be um, m by 1 so the resulting product is just going to be 1 by 1 so it's just going to be a scalar um, and so that's just the sum of a i times b i where i is a sum from 1 to m right so if we want to write that out a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus uh, a m b m all right there is a, a second definition of this if we can think of it uh, if we want to think of it geometrically and it's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them right and what's the angle between them well if we've got the um, vector b there and the vector a there then <coughs> um, this angle is theta and the we can look at what um, the magnitude of a times cos of theta is right so this is a right angle down there and so this is um, a cos theta and so we multiply that length there by that length there to get um, a dot b right so um, let's look at a you know a very simple example of that say a equals um, uh, 3 1 and b equals um, 1 minus 1 then a dot b is just um, 3 times 1 plus 1 times um, minus 1 which is um, 3 minus 1 which is 2 Okay. Uh, interestingly, the if we think of <coughs> excuse me, if we think of the um, the geometric definition of the dot product, and think of taking the um, dot product of a with itself, then that's just the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a times the cos of the angle between a and a. Right, the angle between A and A is zero. Sorry, that should be a uh, that should be a zero, not a theta, right? And cos of zero equals one. Right, so we've just got the magnitude of A squared. Right, so we can um, that means we can think of the magnitude of A or find the um, what the magnitude of a is just by looking at um, the square root of the dot product of a with itself right or if you want to write it out in this way um, it looks like that right and notice for the magnitude of a we'll often write that um, just with single lines right rather than that um, rather than that double bar right the double bar typically means a norm um, <coughs> right uh, so let's just go back to our little example um, a was uh, what was it 3 um, 3 1 so the um, magnitude of a is just um, 3 squared plus 1 squared square root which is the square root of 10 Okay, so we can define a second product on um, on vectors, right? So here, if we've got um, a as an m-dimensional vector and uh, b as a n-dimensional vector, right? Then we can 
we can take what we call that alta product of A and B. Um, and what is that? Uh, and that is the product A um, B transpose. Right? A B transpose. Uh, so that's going to be um, M by 1 times 1 by N. So if we look at those together, that's going to be M by N. And so um, the outer product produces a M by N matrix. All right, so if, um, if we've got our, uh, our example we were looking at before, where A was, say, um, 3, 1, and B was, say, um, 1, minus 1, so B transpose is a row vector, then we get the um, 2 by 2 um, matrix resulting, which is 3 times 1, which is 3, uh, 3 times minus 1, which is uh, minus 3, 1 times 1, which is 1, 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. And um, there's, our, there's our outer product. Uh, finally, I guess, because we're going to be dealing with it a lot in this course, we should look at um, the product of a, a matrix with a vector. And we often think of that as applying the matrix A to the vector X. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> so A is a M by N dimensional matrix. X is a um, N dimensional vector, right? So that's N by 1. So that's going to produce um, the uh, vector, which is M dimensional, right? So it's just got M entries. Uh, and the, um, the ith entry of Y, so where YI is just going to be uh, the, what is that, the ith row, <coughs> the ith row of um, A multiplied by uh, X, All right, so J, um, J equals um, 1 to, uh, 1 to, uh, sorry, what is that, 1 to M. Uh, sorry, that word should be 1 to N, shouldn't it? Okay, so uh, let's look at a quick example. Suppose A equals, um, you know, um, 2 minus 1, 3, 1, 1, 1, and X is, I'll just write that. So A times X, X is the um, two-dimensional vector to one, uh, or should we say three, one. And so A times X is going to be, so that's three by two, that's two by one. So the result is going to be a three-dimensional um, vector and it's going to be um, so 2 times 3 minus 1 times 1 which is uh, what is that 6 minus 1 9 plus 1 3 plus 1 which is um, 5 10 4 I hope that's right okay so one matrix we're going to come up against again and again is the identity matrix. So the identity matrix of uh, dimension n is denoted by in like that. It's the n by n matrix, meaning it has n rows and n columns. And the form of it is that it looks like, uh, so it's a square matrix. We've got 
ones down the diagonal and we've got uh, zeros everywhere else, right? Pop, 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 pop. Okay, so we've got zeros everywhere except um, except for on the diagonal. Um, and the, you know, it's called the identity matrix and the basic effect of multiplying by the identity matrix is that it does nothing, right? So if we've got A, which is N by N, and we multiply A by um, I N, then we get A back, and if we multiply on the other side by I N, we also get A back. Um, and similarly, you know, you can multiply, uh, if we want to multiply uh, M by N matrix um, by the identity matrix, then, you know, on this side, we'll multiply it by I M, and on the other side, we'll multiply it by um, I N, right? And in either case, you get A back. <coughs> uh, one question that will come up against again and again also is um, given a matrix A, uh, assuming it's um, square, right? So it's an N by N matrix. Um, is there some other matrix, uh, say A inverse, such that um, A times A inverse equals the identity matrix, um, which is equal to, you know, A inverse times A, right? Does there exist some matrix A inverse that has some such property? If such a matrix exists, um, so if um, A inverse exists, then we say um, A is invertible, or um, non-singular. Um, and if no such A inverse exists, if not, um, A is um, singular. Right? The problem of actually finding the um, inverse is a, a very hard problem. Um, and particularly for you know a high dimensional A. So let's talk about a quantity known as the determinant of a square matrix A. So we've got A and N by N matrix. Then we denote by um, det A or uh, uh, A surrounded by the absolute value signs um, the determinant. And so we're not we're not going to give the um, to to write down the formula for uh, the general determinant. It's um, kind of complicated. Look it up on Wikipedia maybe. Uh, but in a couple of special cases, um, it's simple enough to write down. So when n equals two, the determinant of a right is just um, <laughs> that thing. And so let's say A is just the matrix with entries A, um, B, C, D. Um, then the determinant of that thing is just A, D minus um, C, B, right? So we've um, multiplied those things two together and um, multiplied these th two things together and subtracted them. Okay, in the case of n equals 3, then if our matrix A has entries, um, so let's say it has entries A, B, C, D, E, F, H, I, J. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply down here adding these products, right? Um, so we're going to get um, AEJ plus B, 
F H plus C D I and we're gonna uh, let's use a different color here um, so we're gonna subtract these um, products coming up from the bottom so um, that one and that one okay so let's go back to black so we've got um, HEC um, minus IFA and minus um, JDB okay um, and this quantity the determinant well it, it sort of tells us about the scale of transforms so if we're going to be looking at something like um, you know a applied to X um, the determinant tells us you know how grossly it tells us uh, how much a scales X okay uh, so let's just look at a quick example. Suppose A equals um, 3, 5, 1, minus 1. Then the determinant of A is just um, 3 times minus 1 minus um, 1 times 5 equals minus 3 minus 5 equals minus 8. Okay. The determinant has... Uh, uh, a, a bunch of um, interesting properties that makes that can make um, finding the determinant um, relatively easy, right? So first is that the the, the determinant of the um, identity matrix is always one. Um, second is that um, transposing a square matrix. Um, has no effect, sorry, uh, let's just go back, that should be a transpose, then transposing a square matrix has no effect on um, the determinant. Right? If um, A has an inverse, then the um, the determinant of the inverse of A is just um, 1 over the determinant of A. Okay, um, if we've got two square matrices A and B, then the determinant of A times B is just the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And given a scalar um, C, if we multiply each element of A by C and we take the um, determinant of the resulting matrix, then um, that's just going to be uh, the determinant of A multiplied by that scalar raised to the power of N. And remember here, um, A is a N by N matrix. Okay, so Let's start looking at um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? So we say an uh, eigenvector. No, so let's start with a, a square ma <laughs> Sorry, a square matrix again. It's an n by n matrix. Um, then E is an eigenvector if a times E equals lambda times E. Okay. Here, um, E is a non-zero vector, right? So the zero vector is just the vector, which is a bunch of zeros. So E is a non-zero vector, and lambda is um, scalar. And it could be zero. Um, <coughs> okay, so E is known as the um, eigenvector and eigenvector and lambda is known as an eigenvalue. Okay. 
Okay, so essentially that's saying the effect of applying A to E is just um, all we get when we multiply A by E is that E gets scaled by some amount given by lambda. Okay, so how do we go about finding these eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Well, uh, we can use a determinant to find the, uh, the eigenvalues of A. Indeed, um, after some manipulation of the, uh, this identity, so if we have A E equals um, lambda times uh, E, then uh, we notice that that is just the same as lambda times uh, I um, N times E, right? And so that implies that uh, A E um, minus lambda I N E equals the, the zero um, vector. Okay. Uh, and we can pull the E out. Right, so lambda I N equals E equals zero. Now, <coughs> these are um, matrix, um, matrices and vectors, so we can't just say that either this must be zero or this must be zero, but if we take, uh, but we can say that uh, if, if this matrix here has this effect on the non-zero matrix, then the determinant of this thing must be zero. Okay, so we can say that the um, determinant of A minus lambda I N equals zero. Okay, and that gives us a, um, it's known as the characteristic polynomial. Um, polynomial. Right, so let's look at um, an example. So if we want to find the eigenvalues of this matrix here, 3, 5, 1, minus 1, then we need to solve um, what we call the characteristic polynomial, P lambda equals um, the determinant of A minus lambda I, um, equals zero, right? So what is this determinant? Well, that's um, three, five, one, minus one, minus lambda times the, the two-dimensional identity matrix, right? So that is um, the determinant of 3 minus lambda, um, 5 minus 0, 1 minus 0, and minus 1 minus lambda, which is uh, minus 1 minus lambda, right? And that determinant is um, 3 minus lambda, uh, minus 1 minus lambda uh, minus um, 1 times 5, right, which is a, just 5. And so if we do a bit of expanding that out and simplifying, it's easy to check that we end up with um, this equation here. And factorizing that gives us um, lambda plus 2 times lambda minus 4. So setting that to 0, we see that lambda um, is either um, 4 or lambda is minus 2. So the eigenvalues of the matrix um, 3, 5, 1, 1, A are 4 and minus 2. Okay, so now we found the eigenvalues, let's find the eigenvectors corresponding with, well, let's just look at one of the eigenvalues. So 
um, our matrix is 3, um, 5, 1, minus 1, that's A, and we saw that one of the eigenvalues is um, lambda equals minus 2. So let's find the uh, eigenvector uh, corresponding to that eigenvalue. So we want to find E, um, let's call it E1, E2, those are the elements of E, and it satisfies A, E equals minus 2, E. All right, so if we write that out fully, um, A times E uh, is gives us a set of linear equations, um, 3E1 um, plus 5E2 equals uh, minus 2E1, and uh, what have we got? E1, <laughs> sorry, minus E2 equals um, minus 2E2, right? So let's solve that first equation. Um, I'll rearrange that first equation. We get um, 5E1 plus 5E2 equals um, naught. So that means um, E1 equals minus E2. The second equation, what do we get? Just move the E2 across to the other side, I guess. So we get um, E1 equals uh, minus E2. Right, and so that's both equations um, reduced down to the same, um, produce the same result. So we've got two free parameters in E1 and E2, um, but we've only got one equation to explain them. Right, so that means uh, we can fix um, one of the parameters, um, say E1 equals 1, and that implies that E1, E2 equals minus 1, right? So E equals um, 1 minus 1 is um, an eigenvector. And it, <coughs> it turns out that anything of the form um, E equals C minus 1, 1 is an eigenvector um, corresponding to the eigenvalue um, lambda equals minus 2, okay? And typically, um, choose um, C such that um, the size of E is uh, 1, right? So that means it's normalized. So here we'll choose um, C equals 1 over root 2. So we say two vectors A and B are orthogonal when the dot product A um, dot B is um, zero. So when does that happen? Well, remember that A dot B is um, the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. Right, so assuming A and B are non-zero, right, so they have greater than zero magnitude, um, then uh, that means to, to make this thing zero, uh, this cosine of the angle between them must be zero. Um, and when is that zero? Um, well, that equals zero when um, theta equals um, pi over two, right? So in that case, so if we've got our vector A um, and our vector um, B, then the angle between them is a right angle. Right? So, you know, in two-dimensional space, we'll say, three-dimensional space, we'll say their thing, things are perpendicular. And generally, we'll just say A and B are orthogonal to each other. So that extends the idea of perpendicularity. Um, when we're talking about sets of vectors, say we've got a set um, E1 up to um, En, well, we say that that set, <laughs> that set is mutually orthogonal. Um, exactly when um, any pair of distinct vectors we take from that set is orthogonal. So if um, EI dot EJ equals 0 for um, EI not equal to EJ. Right? Um, we say uh, a vector EI is normalized 
So EI is um, normalized when it has length one. Right, so that means, um, all right, so if we take the dot product of EI with itself, um, then that's going to be one. Right, or, you know, the square root of that. Um, and so coming back to the set, if um, if the set is mutually orthogonal and each vector within it is normalized, then um, we say that that set is orthonormal. So um, set is orthonormal when, um, so it's mutually orthogonal and um, each member is normalized. So there's a nice result around um, vectors um, A that are um, square and symmetric. So square is the thing is n by n. Um, symmetric means that the transpose of the matrix looks the same as the matrix itself, right? And in that case, um, so if A is square and symmetric, then um, A has n uh, eigenvectors which are mutually orthogonal. Mutually orthogonal. Right, so the, the eigenvectors of this of A form a mutually orthogonal set of size n. And if we're given any um, square matrix A of um, size n with n mutually orthogonal eigenvectors, then we can represent the vector, sorry, we can represent the matrix in this sort of decomposed form where um, A equals the sum of I equals 1 to n of uh, lambda i e i e i transpose, right? And we call that thing u i, right? So um, here lambda i is the ith eigenvalue, eigenvalue, and e i is the ith um, eigenvector, right? And so this u i is a uh, n by n matrix formed by taking the outer product of EI and and so we we've seen this is like a, a an eigenvector expansion of the matrix A. Okay let's finish with a few quick definitions. So we'll let A be a um, n by n matrix. Um, then we define the uh, the range of A so range A to be um, the set of uh, m-dimensional um, vectors such that there is some other vector x that when we apply a to x we end up with y. For some x, okay? And um, that's also referred to as the, um, the column space or the um, span of um, a column space or um, the span, okay? And then the rank of A is just the dimension of the um, range. So that's the number of, you know, mutually um, or orthogonal vectors that we need to describe the range, um, dimension of um, range of A. And finally, um, let's define the null space of A, or um, which we'll denote null A. So the null space is just that set of vectors x um, that when we apply A to them, we end up with the zero vector.